Hello everybody, I'm Deglan Amiro, and I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all of you sincerely for checking out my new project, Political Inaccuracy. Political Inaccuracy is a podcast created by myself and Jimmy Sullivan, and is a product of the work and input of myself, Jimmy Sullivan, Connor DiGiacomo, and Jonathan Andujar. In this particular episode, only Jimmy and I are present, however, you will find both Connor and Jonathan on in the near future. The four of us are great friends, having met through school, and we all find an enjoyment in just talking. We have a love of conversation, and this podcast is our opportunity to share this love with all of you. Through the course of this podcast, you will find us discussing everything from philosophy to current events, from sports to science, from pop culture to politics. We hope that you too may share in the intrigue of our subjects of discussion, and that you may also find the urge to make conversation. We encourage you to share your own thoughts and opinions with both your friends and colleagues and with us in the comments down below. Most of what we talk about will be thought-provoking, and we're sure that many of you will have diverse opinions and ideas, different from anything we have to mention here on the show. We would love to make all of you a part of this show as well by introducing your own input and feedback on top of what it is that we have to say. So please, share with us any comments, critiques, questions, or thoughts of your own, as this show is as much yours as it is ours. We will try to record a new episode to share with you once a week. However, this schedule is quite lenient and subject to change. And do not expect these episodes to be terribly up to date, as, for example, this one you are about to be presented was recorded in mid-February. Also, please don't be intimidated by the name Political Inaccuracy, as politics are all around you and are not quite as scary as they're made out to be. We would also like to note that our show is so much more than just politics and can be enjoyed by anyone who is curious or likes to think. On the topic of our name, Political Inaccuracy, I would like to turn you towards our very first episode in which we address precisely that. Once again, thank you all. Hello and welcome and thank you for tuning in to the first episode of the Political Inaccuracy podcast. I'm Jimmy Sullivan and joining me is Deglin Demuro. Hello, everybody. Deglin, good to see you. Uh, also with us, not actually here with us today, but they will be, they're with us in spirit right now. They will also uh, hopefully be uh, joining us uh, a little later in our run here is uh, Jonathan Andujar and Connor DiGiacomo, but they are, will not be on today. Uh, we will miss them, but we will uh, carry on without them. So it's good to have you with us, and thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, we appreciate it. Um, of course, uh, you heard in our intro, we are the Political Inaccuracy Podcast, and uh, I figured that that was uh, kind of appropriate for us to talk about today, uh, in terms of the meaning of political inaccuracy, why it's important, how it can be used. So, uh, Deglin, obviously, we'll start with you. Uh, just a couple thoughts on the meaning of political inaccuracy, the importance of it, etc. Well, to me, um, political inaccuracy means, at least in, in, in the form of this podcast, means means two things. I think uh, one of the ones, and I think we'll probably talk about this a bit because I, I know we can go on forever with this, and this is uh, something you had brought up, mm. is, uh, I mean, there is, you know, out there, there is a lot of political inaccuracy all over the place. Uh, I mean, you hear it too often now in politics. People don't know what they're talking about or, or just blatantly blatantly tell lies. So I think we we can probably do do a job to uh, to try to help people to, you know, to get to understand what out there is real what out there is not because a lot of people especially um especially around you know our age when you get you know high school college kind of kids they're trying to get into politics but really i mean they don't quite know what's going on which and and it's not their quite their responsibility to know what's going on but you have these people going up there and 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 telling lies and stuff and 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 just making up stuff uh making up alternative facts about uh about politics and then you have a whole bunch of kids who you know who end up confused they don't know what's really going on in the world and so i think we can we could do something there probably to help with that a little bit um there's that and and then also for me too i think uh political inaccuracy uh i think what what is also good to know is that you know we ourselves here on this podcast we're going to be a little politically inaccurate. I mean, let's let's be fair. We don't know everything we're talking about to 100%. We're going to do our best to try to stick to facts. And if, if we ever, you know, say something and somebody's like, oh, I don't know about that, we'll be sure to look it up. I mean, absolutely. But um, 
I mean, take everything you hear with a, you know, with a, with a grain of salt, uh, as the saying goes. So, um, I mean, that's to me, you know, just know that uh, that we ourselves, you know, we're we're humans. We have our own opinions. So, you might not find yourself agreeing with everything we have to say, and and maybe you know everything we have to say isn't all that necessarily right. But, you know. That's, I mean, that's kind of the nature of uh, of this podcast. We're gonna do our be- our absolute best to be to be subjective and to be fair. Mm. Um, but, but you know, I- expect a little bit of political inaccuracy here or there. Oh yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, you know, we so far we're three and a half minutes in. I don't think we've said anything untrue yet. But you know, we're gonna d- do the best that we can. You know, not not it's not only a thing of fact checking ourselves, but we, we really want to be right. We want to exactly. say things that are true. We, we don't want to make stuff up. We, we want to be talking about things that happened, et cetera. We're, we're going to fact check. We're going to hold ourselves accountable. And I, th- I think that's important because it, you see in politics, and it's not a partisan thing, but you see a lot of lies, as you said, uh, a lot of blat- blatant lies, not just lies, like lies where you go, no, that, that no, that's not true. Uh, and you also have things with politicians where, they don't necessarily our, – our politicians, when you ask them questions, they're not really straight shooters. They don't answer the question. They don't oh, – they, they circumvent. Absolutely. It, it's what was it? Circumlocution, I think, was the word, like in oh, English, where they talk about, like, you know, you, you sure. talk around things, but you know what I mean. Like, it's I, – I think in, in politics, that's a huge thing because people – I mean, they, I, I've seen speeches. They take, like, a half hour to get to the point. Yeah, and it's it's like, uh, excuse me, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And so I think for kids our age, you know, they, I think a lot of them want to understand, you know, what's going on. But I think they they also need to be interested in it because it doesn't capture their attention. Maybe like it should because it's a really important thing to understand right, right. where and we're at in our country. I mean, I just looked it up. The word you used is is that's one hundred percent correct. Circumlocution. Oh, it is. thank and God. That's, yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, here it says, the use of many words where fewer would do, especially in a deliberate attempt to be vague or evasive. And that's, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking that's about. That's literally how you describe politicians. That's, yeah. That is the word circumlocutionative. Yeah. <laughs> circumlocutive, maybe? Yeah, I think that... That, that might yeah. be it, Circum, yeah. circumlocutive. I don't know if that's a word, but we should make it a word. <laughs> it's a that, word now. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. Now that we said it's one, that's, that's the rule. Once you say a word, it becomes a word. Absolutely. Yeah, so... But I mean that that is what describes politics in this country and and absolutely we're going to do our best to try to make sure that we're we're avoiding political inaccuracy because the last thing we want to do is to add to that. Yeah, cuz uh, we want to try to hopefully hopefully decrease from that. But again, um what we are telling you here is that absolutely you know everything we say feel free to look it up yourself. Feel free mm. to to do your own fact checking. It's 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 never too late to start fact checking anything anything you know there are plenty of old stories i'll tell you myself there are plenty of old things that i may have heard sometime on a documentary i may have heard from a friend of mine and i'm going to tell it and i'll be like i don't know if this is true but it's a really cool story and and the thing is plenty of those i haven't fact checked and i probably should because yeah. i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to spread them to more people and then all of a sudden you have everybody in the world uh thinking that there's such thing as like a white asparagus which maybe there is maybe there is a white asparagus i don't know if i'm making this <laughs> up now but if i tell you a story about a white asparagus and you go hmm that's pretty interesting you tell all your friends about this magical white asparagus then uh, th- the entire world's going to think that we can grow white asparagus but that's not not the case yeah it's you know it's like anything else you tell a lie and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger it's like that game, you know, in grammar school, telephone. Where oh you yeah, would, telephone. Where you course. would like you would start with one thing and then you go back around and it's something completely different. It's something completely and, it, and much more extraordinary. Exactly. It starts off with, um, with, uh, my wife was a fair guest, and then at the end it becomes a white asparagus. That's what yeah. It is. <laughs> so yeah, and a white <laughs> asparagus is a lot more memorable than my wife was a fair guest. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. L- a lot less boring of a statement to say a white asparagus. I mean, I'm not sure how exciting a white asparagus is. Uh, I'm sure it'd be, it'd be more exciting to see than just to hear. It's it's one of those, I think, you see it once and you go, oh, wow, that's interesting. And you just, like, pass it off and you're just yeah. like, yeah, goodbye. And you're like, all right, <laughs> yeah. white asparagus, been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. Show me what's next. Yeah, you're not impressive, but uh, uh, the, I wasn't talking to you. But... Uh, <laughs> The uh, 
I think what we're trying to say is that a term you probably hear a lot on the news right now is fake news. And uh, I don't think we're necessarily news here, but we're not going to be fake either. We're going to try to tell the truth as best as we can. If we don't, we're going to hold ourselves accountable. And uh, yeah, we're just going to, we're going to tell, we're going to tell it like it is or as close to like it is as, as we can. Absolutely. And then we're, we're not going to be politically inaccurate. Try not to be. Try not to be. Unlike we, the we can't we can't promise that. And see that that's what we'll yeah, be honest yeah, too. Exactly. As I said, take everything you take everything you hear here. Go look it up. Look it up yourself. Do yeah. you do yourself that favor. Exactly. And you know, it, it's uh knowledge is a really great thing and if we, you know, say something it's like please could go on Google and if we're wrong, tell us. Like we don't Abs- care. absolutely. I mean there's there's a comment section down below. We want to hear everything you have to say. We really do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that I, I was just kind of um, talking about fake news, about how that's not what we're going to be necessarily. And that, I guess, maybe kind of leads us into our next point where political inaccuracy, I think, is really important today in our, in our world, not only in this country, but in globally, uh, politically as well. Um, I guess my question, and this will probably lead to a larger discussion, is how exactly is this political inaccuracy, political accuracy, how is it? important in the climate in which we're living in right now uh well th- th- i mean that's a, that's a great question um and r- and it really does it gets it gets to the roots of of the reasoning for having having a, a sort of podcast like this and i think um i think uh you know a lot of this i mean for, uh, first of all i should say too you know a lot of what we're going to talk about here isn't just going to be simply politics i mean mm-hmm. we, we have a lot of interesting people uh, i mean unfortunately two of them can't be here right now but very interesting people with very interesting thoughts. So we'll get into plenty of uh, very interesting, you know, philosophical kind of discussion stuff like that. But um, but uh, a lot of it will be based on on politics. And I think there are there are too many people today who just don't don't understand politics correctly. They don't. They they look at everything from you know a very very skewed sorry skewed uh, point of view. Um, you know. To the point where maybe they they heard something in the, in a TV show, they heard something in a movie, saw something in a video game, and they just assume that to be true um, about about just politics, you know, uh, the political landscape and and whatnot in general. And and I think that's kind of unfortunate because really, if you try to look to the news, if you try to look to the media, uh, and if, especially if you try to look to the politicians, you get nothing mm-hmm. concrete. You get absolutely. N- you get nothing helpful. At all, all that's going to do is confuse you more. So there are so many people who just who really don't know what is what's going on politically, uh, and and I think that's I think again I th- I think that's something that we we need to I mean as a country I think we need to to address head on. But I think uh, hopefully us group of self proclaimed geniuses here. Oh gosh. <laughs> can, uh, well, you're a genius. <laughs> no, no. No, stop. Me. <laughs> We're all geniuses in our own right. Yeah, That's we we are. Mm. But I, I think the thing is with our political system right now, it's not – I don't think it was really meant to be easy to understand. Like I, I think when our political system was made, I think it was I think it was meant to confuse slash bore us. It hasn't always bored us. I mean, if you look at – the last election, there were stories about it, you know, literally every day. Oh, know? of course, of course. And that's not to take sides. I mean, there, it was literally just an onslaught of information about both candidates and stuff. I mean, there was stuff literally happening every day. Right, right. Like right. crazy developments. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I think the political system was not designed to be easy to understand. And unfortunately, I think for a lot of people, that's that really puts them off because now – they look at it and they go, oh, well, it's going to take me a while to understand this. And admittedly, I don't think I fully, uh, fully understand it. I don't. No, no, I don't think. I don't think. Th- I mean, t- you think the people at the top fully understand it? Do you no, think they, they don't. Know what's going on? No, no, they absolutely don't. I'm sure there are people at the bottom who know a hell of a lot more than than yeah than the people at the top do. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's a, that's a very concerning point. But I think to your point entirely, you say it's it's not meant to be easy um easy to understand. I think you are completely right. I mean, you know the story of um, of uh, of the electoral college. Oh, why sure. It, why it was set up, right? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we can talk a, a little bit about the electoral college if you want in a second, but yeah. But um, I mean, it had originally been set up by our founding fathers, 
not, you know, really people say, oh, because it, you know, it, it, it makes things more equal based upon the states. It gives some of the states that have smaller populations more say, yada, yada, yada. And while all of this is true, that was not its real intention for being set up of why we don't have true democracy in, in terms of voting for a president. And the simple reason is, is the founding fathers knew that people themselves were not educated in politics. Mm, and yeah. so instead, they would all cast their votes. And then based on their votes, you know, the electorates would say, all right, OK, yes, you know, I agree with your votes or say, I don't really agree with your votes, but you're all voting against me. So, yes, I'll favor I'll, I'll sorry, I'll vote in favor of uh, whoever you chose or the electorate can go, no. You know, I'm supposed to represent you people, but you, you're kind of wrong here. You know, you're not right. So I'm not casting my vote for that person. And we saw that, um, I don't know how many, but yeah. I, think, I think this year was a record number for electorates who did not vote on behalf of what their state asked them to vote for. You had uh, a bunch of people who were from uh, Hillary states who voted Trump, a bunch of people uh-huh. from Trump states who voted Hillary. I mean, obviously it wasn't enough to, to swing uh, the election. Yeah. But that still hasn't happened, but it could potentially. There's a great video online. Uh, I'll look up the number in a second, but you potentially could win based on the Electoral College. And this isn't even with uh, people changing their votes. You could win the presidency with like 22% of the Oh, absolutely. Vote. Right. And I mean, you saw this year. Uh, yeah. The, the president won, um, you know, without the popular vote and whether or not you think that that's that's right or not is, is your own opinion, yeah. and, and absolutely you're entitled to that. But all I'm going to say is, is that, you know, that, that can not only can that possibly happen, but you can have someone win the popular vote, win electorally, but then if all the electorates say, no, we don't want to vote for you, yeah. can still lose the election. And yeah. again, that has not happened yet, but it can. It can, yeah. It can, because, because our founding fathers thought that our people didn't understand politics and wouldn't understand politics. And unfortunately, ever since then, it's basically been, well, why do we really need to educate the people on politics? We have, we have people to do that for them. We yeah. have people to vote for them, all this sort of stuff. That's why we're a republic and not, not so much a democracy, mm-hmm. because all of it is, is let's, let's elect this person to elect who is in best interest for us, you know, as opposed to just knowing politics yourself. Yeah, and you know, you said like the people weren't educated uh, about politics, and they didn't have ways to get educated in, in politics. And in 1790 or whenever exactly that happened, I mean, that was absolutely true. You know, you had people who there weren't really uh, a lot of uh, mass media uh, other than newspapers. Really, people it took people a long time to get their news. Now, if you look at our modern system, I mean, we've got I could go on Twitter right now and and find out what's going on. Just say because it's been in the news recently, just say what's going on with uh, Michael Flynn or the National Security Council right, yeah, yeah. or something like that that's you know important to our, our uh, politics. And so I, I think people now, they may not be educated in politics, but they at least... They, Definitely they, more active. They have too. a semblance of an idea of what's going on because of our modern media, because of the immediacy of it, and they're able to you know make a lot of judgments. Sometimes, unfortunately, they're snap judgments, but right, a, a right. lot of... Uh, much faster judgments about elected officials, who should I vote for, etc. You know, when the Electoral College was formed, and I mean, we can get more into this later, but when the Electoral College was formed in 1790, people people didn't know what was going on with politics. And oh, the, right, right. The system was, I think, m- m- I, I think I said this before, the system was designed to bore them. And um, right. I think now people are actually... People are trying to be interested in politics now. I think what you saw at this election cycle, I mean, the debates got record ratings. Pe- people are interested, at least in, like, presidential elections and midterm elections, etc. Now, they may not be interested in politics all the time. I think you're going to have a lot of people who, after this past election, they're, they're not going to pay attention. And that's the unfortunate thing because, right, right. you know, you have to pay attention to it all the time because if you lose sight of it, then you have different people elected and people you probably don't want necessarily getting into office. So I, I think that people are trying to be interested in politics, but I, I think it's difficult for them over such a long span. I mean, this is kind of a lull that we have right now. I think the State of the Union's in like two weeks. This isn't a really yeah. high action packed period in politics right now. And I think you're starting to see people lose interest. I mean CNN's ratings went down after the election, Fox News, same thing. So I, I think people are, are not once the election's over, they kinda of just drop out and say, Oh, okay, we're done. 
Right. Well, and 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 if you ask me, uh, and I think you'll totally agree that I mean that's that is not a good thing. That's no, not, it's that's, not. I mean, that's like somebody calling themselves a football fan and all they do is watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's quite literally what it is. Except the Super Bowl at least happens once every year. Yeah, exactly. We don't have an election, you know, until every four years we yeah. finally have an election. So all people do is, is you know, maybe they care about it uh, the year leading up to the election. Mm. You know, a little bit. They'll they'll watch some. Maybe maybe they'll watch the primaries. Uh, you know, and the speeches that they do there, or or maybe they'll watch some of the debates once the primaries and stuff are over. Maybe not even. But they'll just look at the last year and they'll say, "All right, well, I mean, I voted for this dude in uh, 2016." It kind of looks like he's been doing some of the stuff I wanted him to do, so I guess I'll vote for him again. But you missed everything in between. Yeah. You know, all those mistakes that he made, all of those, even all even all the good things, you know, that he did. You're missing out on those, too. So there's there's so much in between. I mean, again, that's like that's like saying, you know, if, if you take the Super Bowl and you have two teams. Go ahead, Jimmy. I'll let you pick two teams. Uh well we just had the Patriots and the Falcons so we could sure, just do them go. yeah they're, they're pa- cool Patriots and Patriots and Falcons right so you could you could have had somebody say all right I mean the Patriots they've won a bunch of times already so I guess they're just gonna win again you know because and that's again how people look at politics a lot they go yeah. all right well that guy seems to have been done doing some good stuff so I'll vote for him so well the Patriots they've they've won a bunch uh, I guess they'll probably win again where I mean if you look at the Super Bowl it was very close to oh, not yeah. being that way yeah I mean, course, the Falcons were winning, what, 28-3, to three, halfway through the I third think, quarter? I think, yeah, 28-3 to three yeah. until, until the Patriots finally brought it back. But um, uh, but you, you do. You have cases like, like that, you know, where people really do. They only look at, you know, the uh, whatever the term is. You know, if it's, if it's a one-year term, if we're talking the Super Bowl, or if it's a four-year term, if we're talking the president, they only just look, you know, at the beginning of it, really, and then at the end of it, you know, once the... Once it's refreshed, you know, every election or every Super Bowl, and then a lot of people just base it off of that, and then they claim themselves, you know, to be politically, um, uh, I guess, m- maybe active or uh, politically informed. I'll say that, you know, they'll say I'm I'm an informed voter. I yeah. know what I'm talking about. Well, just because you know who you know was running for president, yeah. and just because you kind of know some of what they did, that's not politically informed because you can kind of know a little bit about Hillary Clinton yeah. right you can kind of know right that she was secretary of state you can kind of know that she was a governor right but uh-huh. but um once you know once you once you really look in deep i mean you could have like heard about the email scandal not s- not known so much of that but you can look in a lot deeper and you can find a lot more flaws Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, sure, you could find maybe a lot more ups, too, but you could find a lot more flaws in someone like that than just knowing, oh, well, I mean, I guess she's all right. She was Secretary of State for some time. Or you take Donald Trump, you know, yeah. someone like that, and you say, man, what's what's he talking about? He He's he's some reality TV star, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not condoning support, you know, for Donald Trump uh, or anything or support against Clinton at all through this, but... It's just a lot of times it can go against what you think. You uh-huh. say Donald Trump, right? Oh, he's he's just some TV star. He has no political background. What does he know? But you can, you know, actually look during the election cycle and and if you see all the primaries that he does well at, you know, how how well he resonates with people, whether you think that a good thing or a bad thing, just how well he resonates with people, and that can kind of change your mind about it. So, through all those all those little things. Yeah, like all those like uh, we'll say like in terms of uh the football season. All you know, you need to watch every yes. game to know really what to expect from the Super Bowl. You need, yeah. to, you need to know, you need to have seen every play that, you know, especially if we're talking like Tom Brady, you got to see every play that Tom Brady's made yeah. to know, you know, whether or not he's really delivering, you know, this Super Bowl or whether he's going to be a flop, you know, really to predict something like that. And in voting, that's, yeah. that's what you need. Exactly. You need that if you want to be an, an informed voter. Yeah, and I mean, we're not telling you, like, how to vote, but, like, if you look at, like, the Super Bowl, you know, you may not know that, like, a lot of people hadn't heard of the Falcons, but you might not know that they crushed two opponents, you know, before they went to the Super Bowl. Right, right. A lot of people might not know the Patriots, but they went 14-2. and Their quarterback was suspended. Their quarterback's one of the best uh, quarterbacks ever. And you have to look into that, too, and you have to take everything and then make a decision. Whatever that decision is is obviously fine because, you know, this is a free country, and that's probably why we're so great. But, you know, you have to – 
the decisions that you make, you know, our right to vote is probably the single most essential right towards our democracy. And right. I, I think that you have to make informed decisions. If you want your vote to, I don't want to say count, but it, you need to be informed and you need to be prepared if you want to feel good about your vote. I, I, I totally agree you know, cause, with that. Yeah. Like, because you can vote for, for somebody and go, oh, what have I just done? You know, and you, if you realize later that there are things about that person that you didn't like. And on the other hand, you know, you could not vote for somebody and then look back into them later and go, yeah, this person w- would have been pretty good. Or if they won, you go, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll vote to reelect that person. I think back to a, to a, a funny, funny video I saw. I, I think this was on, on election day. And um, what it was, is it was some guy, he had just gotten out of the booth and he was sitting in his car and uh, he just described his process. He went into the booth, you know, and he's like, you know, he, he's not a huge fan of Clinton and... And, of course, he's he's not, you know, a big fan of Trump either. So he's, like, looking at the two and, like, hmm, hmm. And then he looks down and he sees Gary Johnson. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's, like, who are you? Yeah. What? I, he's, like, Gary. And he's, he's like, talking to his, his phone at this point um, in the car. He's, like, Gary, if you would have made yourself more public, you know. Yes. Hell, maybe I would have voted for you. Yeah. Because I didn't like either of those two, so, you know, who the hell are you, Mr. Yeah. Gary Johnson? <laughs> you want my vote? Because I'm looking for someone to give. If that person were more politically informed, what, now whether it's his fault or, in fact, if anything, probably the media's fault, because if you, if you just watched, you know, nightly news, how many times would Gary Johnson have come up? Uh, probably not a lot. Uh, unless they're showing a clip of what is Aleppo... Uh, oh I, yeah, uh, for, only, uh, only I like, don't know any foreign only leaders. Like, like the bat, or pr- uh, pretending to have a heart attack. Yeah, yeah. he was high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which was, <laughs> not gonna lie, that was pretty funny. It, right. So you can't. I don't know if you really blame the guy, but you take a situation like that, and it's, you know, it's kind of afterwards where it's like, man, you know, only if he had known about Gary Johnson, maybe he would actually voted for him. Or you bet Gary Johnson saying to himself damn, only if these people knew about me, I could have done better. I mean, and not that it would have helped him a whole lot in terms of getting the presidency, but phenomenally, uh, unfortunately in the country, I, I, I full, fully support third parties. I um, agree. Yeah, and I, I, I would love to see them do, to do much better than they're doing, but unfortunately people aren't all that informed. Uh-huh. Um, and I think, too, also quick to, to, to mention how you had said a lot of times, you know, after voting, people will kind of go, Wait, what? What did I just do? Yeah, <laughs> right. Th- think back to Brexit, right? Yeah. Think back that. Right. I mean, that passed, and I don't know how much it passed by. If it passed by a lot, well, I it passed s- by. I by gotta look it up. Little, I, it was yeah, close. If you could look it up, I don't think it was by a, a tremendous amount. But but I mean, it passed. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, uh, oh, should we you know recount that? Was maybe did we count? This was fifty-one point nine to forty-eight point one voted in favor of leaving the European right. Union. Uh, looks like about 17.4 million votes for leave, and this looks like about 16.1 million votes for remain. So it's it's a roughly 1.3 million vote margin, which is, I mean, there's enough people who are probably in the country who are thinking, yeah, yeah, let's do it, and then they go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they well, wake they up think, the day after. Exactly, and, they think afterwards, and like, wait, wait, what is Brexit again? Yeah, what was what were we voting for? I mean. I don't know if this is true. I get this is see this is one of those things. Uh, look it up. Maybe I'll look it up here uh-huh. uh, after I say it, and I'll give you an answer in just a second. But um, they had said that a trending Google search in Britain, yeah. the day after Brexit was what is yeah. Brexit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I I find that funny to be true, but I also find it sad to it be is. true. People yeah. people do go and vote on stuff they they literally don't know. It's yeah. one thing if you know what Brexit is. But you don't know how really it would affect your country and uh-huh. your vote. But if you literally don't know what the word Brexit means, yeah. and you go and vote on it, I mean, and, and just to be clear, you know, we're not saying Brexit is good, bad, or otherwise. Oh yeah, no. And this is you know the right of the right. people to vote, and they made their decision. And absolutely, that's, but and I that's think, fine. but but I mean, after that, if you know, if this is true, and again, I'll look it up in just a second. If this is true, you know, that people really, you know, trended the Google search, what is Brexit? And also afterwards too, from from what I heard is that as soon as it happened public opinion in the country immediately switched it yeah. was like it was in favor of we shouldn't have done that yeah. as opposed to we should have done yeah. that um but unfortunately for them there's not a whole lot they can do now because uh-huh. they, they took the vote and yeah. um and again it's it's all about it's all about being politically 
informed. Yeah. You know, having having it there. So, uh, all right, you can. Try it. Yeah, I just got a couple more numbers here. When we were talking about that. It, oh yeah, yeah. Leading Google search in England, and England was it was four countries that voted on this. It was Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and England. And right. Wales voted in favor of leaving. Northern Ireland and Scotland voted. They stayed. They voted to stay. Now they're saying Northern Ireland might actually, uh, Scotland too, they might break away from yeah. uh, from Great Britain. In that case, Northern Ireland would probably just be absorbed into Ireland. Yes. Because they said that's the easiest way for them to do it. And Scotland, they might, they might leave, uh, they might leave Great Britain. Yes, yeah, so th- that'll be interesting. But England, they voted 53.4 to 46.6 to leave. Okay, this is 15. Point uh, we'll call it 15.2 million votes to leave, about a little under 13.3 million votes to remain. If you were to swing 700,000 of those votes, you would have had a different outcome. Seven, 700,000. And theoretically, I mean, 700,000 people could kind of be unsure or, or kind of look at it and go, oh, what's Brexit? And go, yeah, what the heck, let's do it. And that, that, I mean, we're not, again, we're not saying whether it's good or bad or whatever. We're just saying that uh, non-informed voting sometimes can, can lead to outcomes where, especially in a close race like this, where it was, you know, only maybe 1.3 million votes that decided it, that, that kind of voting can really swing the outcome. And unfortunately, it's kind of something that, you know, in our country, I, I know the founding fathers really tried to avoid because they, they knew of the possibility of, uh, things like this where, I don't want to say a tyrannical majority, but a, a majority who, who wants change and a majority who, uh, yeah, basically a majority set on change uh, makes an outcome like this, and then like you know, two days later, it's like, oh, what, do we do, what do we just do? Regrets. This and is so, interesting. So you imagine, right, if, if Britain had an electoral college mm. in this decision instead of, yeah. instead of that, and because it's such a close percentage point, Right? Maybe you you do. You just have a few of the electorates switch over, and that would be enough. That would be yeah. enough to change the outcome, and and Britain would still be in the EU. Uh, Northern Ireland and Scotland wouldn't be leaving. Yeah. Great Britain. Uh, I, again, I can't say for sure that they are, but there's a lot of speculation that that might happen. And so you think, you know, this is one of those cases where you go and you say, you know, maybe it is a good thing that yeah. there's an electoral college because they they can save the people from something like this. They can. Yeah, because, I mean, just to uh, get it, I'm looking at this map, and I think I can pretty confidently say it's a map of, of the counties and uh, s- some of the areas, kind of like what you see in our country where you, they pull up the county map and how the counties voted. I can pretty confidently say that at least about half this map is yellow, and yellow is for Remain on, on my thing, which is on uh, BBC. And so I think that's a case where in the elect- if, you, if you had an electoral college for something like this, they might have stayed. Right. I mean, right. they really might have stayed because you have large pockets, like the entire northern part of this voted to remain. There's, there's no support for leave in like the north half of, of some like of these. It was these, probably, I, yeah. I'm guessing it was probably more the major cities. And, a lot, uh, yeah. Yeah, because like, I, I imagine those are probably the more uh, liberal areas of the country, and I'm sure I'm yeah. sure leaving the EU is a more liberal movement. Um, yeah, probably more popular. It, it was, I think it might have been a little populist as well. I mean, if we're just being honest. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely think that's true. Here I got I, NPR, so I'll say it's probably fairly reliable here. I I trust NPR. Um, it says here in um, Northern Ireland and in Scotland, the. Uh, the searches, what is Brexit and what is the EU? <laughs> yeah. We're both trending after Brexit. Again, talk about, talk ab- again, bring this, talk about uninformed voters. Talk yeah. about people, you know, who. And, and those po- people are probably the difference in leave and remain. Exactly. I think, <laughs> you know I I think mean? they probably make more than the difference uh, of leave and remain. I, yeah. I absolutely think they could. You know, f- I mean, f- even forget an electoral college, forget that being there, just. If you had informed voters who really know, first of all, and I, also being informed doesn't just mean you know what it is, but I think yeah. you need to know what it could do exactly to your country. Yeah. And um, and uh, so if if you have that right, you know what what can it do to your country? Then, once you know that piece of the puzzle, then you're an informed voter. Exactly. And if you like the way your country looks after Brexit. Then go ahead, vote for it. If yeah. you don't like the way it does, 
then vote against it. Yeah. You know, and so, th- I mean, that's that's an informed political opinion. And not to say that some opinions are better than o- others, but let's be real, some opinions are stronger than uh-huh. others. And yeah. I think I think is is a better way to put it. Again, not that some some are better, some are worse, but some are definitely stronger and more supported than than another opinion. Yeah, and and look, I mean, there are probably people like that on the leave side of the the margin as well. I'm but sure. It's yeah, some would have switched either way. I yeah, yeah. But you know, this goes to goes to show you that information is good, and that knowing what not only what's going on but the effects of it, I think I think are just absolutely crucial to inform our voting process. Not even necessarily one way or another, just to know what's going on. And if you know what's going on, and you know the effect you could have, and you make a vote, then you can feel good about it either way knowing that you voted for somebody who you believe can lead the country or the world in, in the proper direction. And I, I, I think that kind of, I don't know if it maybe necessarily leads us into our next subject, but how do we prevent political inaccuracy? How do we prevent, uh, you know, uh, stuff like, I, I'm not saying prevent Brexit, but prevent misinformation, you know, pr- prevent people's misconceptions of things. How do we prevent that? Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think one of the best things you can do, and, and you had brought this up before, you know, a lot of political misinformation and uh, belief in misinformation is simply because of uh, lack of interest. Yeah. You know, if you hear something and you're not really interested in it, you're just going to hear what you hear and say, all right, I guess that's it. But if you hear something and um, and you go, all right, that's interesting, and you look it up more and you find out that what you heard isn't totally the true story, you know, there's more behind it than that. Great example. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard about this, but there was a lawsuit um, back a few years ago. Uh, I want to say early 2000s, maybe. Some woman had bought, uh, I believe I believe she was an English woman. I, ca- I can't be sure. She bought um, a McDonald's coffee and spilled it on herself. And she sued McDonald's for for the coffee being hot, is the story as it goes. And that, I mean, I see the expression you're making. That sounds ridiculous, does it not? that she spills coffee on herself, she sues it, McDonald's because it's hot and she burns herself, right? And and full disclosure, it said, caution hot, yeah. you know, like on the cup and everything. Yeah. So you say to yourself, that's ridiculous. How could you possibly do that? And I, for a very long time, thought that. And then one day I decided, let me look up this story. Let me, let yeah. me th- first of all, let me see if it's true. Second of all, let me, let, me, let me really look it up. And so I did. It's 100% true. It actually happened. But here's the story. It's not that she sued McDonald's because she spilled it on herself or because it was hot. She took full responsibility for that. The thing was, when she spilled it on herself, she got third-degree burns. Her point was, no coffee should ever be served that hot. McDonald's should not be making coffee that is so hot it's going to give you third-degree burns. And she won. She sued and won for millions of dollars. Because, I mean, the court, they... They agreed with her. Again, it's not that, oh, she spilled coffee on herself, so she's going to sue McDonald's for her spilling of her coffee. No. She sued McDonald's because the coffee was, was, was made way hotter than it should be, was unhealthily, unsafely hot, to the point where what they determined is you could just put this in your mouth and get burned. You yeah. Can, if you take a sip of this, of this hot, hot coffee, you can get a, like a nasty burn on your mouth. It's not safe to be serving coffee this hot. And and the lawsuit won. It went through. And see, now, I mean, now hearing that, tell me, does that make a lot more sense now? Uh, it, it, when you explain it that way, it does. When you hear the story of a woman spills coffee on self and sues McDonald's for $5 exactly. million dollars because she spilled coffee on self, you go, and, oh, she's an idiot. And but that's it, what you see when you look at any website. Yeah. Or if you have, like, I have, I have CNN right on my phone. I get notifications from it. Uh, personally, I will say I'm more a fan of BBC because I, I, I find that, um, that they're, they're distant. They're not directly associated, so they're, they're much more bipartisan. Uh-huh. I find they're much, more, they're much more fair about American politics because mm. that's mainly what I'm concerned about. Oh, American sure. Po- and, and sure, some world stuff too. Yeah. But when it comes to American politics, they're much more fair, much less biased. And so, uh, but I have CNN because CNN's it's, it's um, an American broadcasting corporation so it's it's quicker you know yeah. you get you get if you want quick news about american politics uh-huh. cnn is quicker so i have that for like quick alerts and um every time you know you do even on even on a spot like cnn you know we're not even talking about 
uh, some crazy online, you know, place like uh, The Onion. I don't know. Yeah. Where the Onion. <laughs> They're just looking yeah. for uh, for funny headlines. Yeah. But even CNN, you know, they will absolutely all the time use headlines that are totally misleading. Oh, yeah. They want you to click on it. Yeah. And then they want you to read it and find out it was way more boring than you thought yeah. it was. Yeah. But just as long as they spike your interest for the headline. And a lot of people see the headline and that's all they read. Yeah. They don't click on it. You know, or they, or they quickly flip through a newspaper, you know, and, uh, and they see something crazy like, yeah, woman sues McDonald's for spilling coffee on herself, wins $5 million, Yeah. And they go, wow. Wow, she's nuts. Yeah, that's insane. What are, the, what are the courts in this country doing? You know, puts down the newspaper, walks away, goes on the rest of his life thinking that. Because he never reads the full story, or yeah. never looks into it. Yeah, and 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 that's that's something that that you know talking about what can we do to fix all this political inaccuracy is we need to we need to spike interest, and that and that's why I brought this story up because I that was something that I found interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting story. Yeah, I mean a woman, woman spilling sues, coffee on herself. Sues McDonald's, yeah, for for spilling coffee yeah. on herself. It sounds so silly. It sounds so ridiculous that it's interesting. Yeah, and when you look it up, there's there's so much more of a story behind it. Yeah. And so if you make things, you know, sound interesting and, and typically, you know, to, again, to someone, you know, of high school, college age, they go, politics, why? That's such a boring thing yeah. to talk about. But I, I, like, I promise you, hopefully you'll find out, you know, if not today, through, through the future of this podcast, you know, as, as it goes on and on, that, you know, the things we talk about, hopefully you find to be genuinely interesting. And they're they're all going to, in some way, you know, relate to politics. Whether we're debating what the future of of humankind is, or <laughs> or even yeah. something like space exploration, or oh, where sure. science is going, and and maybe like stem cell research is a, is a hot topic. Anything like that, yeah, that we talk about. Yeah. Hopefully, you find it interesting, and it all has politics. Everything has politics. Yeah. I find that one of the best ways uh, that I get people to start accepting politics is you find a lot of people. We're very into sports. And, you know, once you get to telling them, well, it's all politics, you know, and they go, what are you talking about? No, it's, it has nothing to do with politics. And, you know, you, you point some things out and, and you say, well, why do you think this person's getting traded or this person's getting drafted or, or any of this, yeah. you know, sort of thing? Everything diverts back to two things. It diverts back to, to politics, and then even further than that, it diverts back to money. And, and yeah. politics always diverts back to money, uh, too. Of course. Um, but, but, I mean, the fact of the matter is everything does have politics in it you know when you yeah. think about it and and it's, it is such an important thing t- to know that i mean really if, if you can make things interesting i think that's how you reach the masses well if you, if you think about it too like sports and politics you know they're more similar than you think like look at the super bowl falcons are up 28 3 everybody's like okay they're gonna win people start turning it off the falcons themselves get a little less interested patriots stage this massive comeback it wasn't unlike our election you know, if if the Falcons just close the door, it's over. You know, it's kind of like if if Hillary Clinton would have, I mean, and there were certain things that maybe weren't necessarily in her control, but if if she just didn't mess up those last two months, she wins. I mean, I think she wins. Yes, and and that's I mean that's, that's the a, thing. That's a, a like a, a phenomenal analogy. Yeah. That's something I I I didn't think of at all. But and I had mentioned the Super Bowl before. Yeah. But, I mean, that you bring that up, yeah, I mean, it's extremely true. And the thing is, too. It like, really is. You know, this joke I heard the other day, and it's absolutely true. You know, the Falcons and Hillary Clinton both lost for the same reason. They didn't have a strong ground game. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, that's brilliant. But, no, but oh, it's, it's true. Um, and then you were talking about the future of this podcast, you know, and sparking interest. And I'll, I'll tell a quick story about how this kind of started. Um, we were both in school the day after the election. And uh, I ran into you in the library, and you basically asked me, well, what do you think? Next thing you know, we were talking for two and a half hours. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and that's, how you spark, that's how you spark interest. You, you find somebody to talk to, number one, because talking about it is important because that's how right, people right. get interested. But also, you, you, you find people who are interested in it, and if they do it the right way like you did for me <laughs> – <laughs> No, it's just true. Um, Thank you. You will, be, you will be more interested in it than you were before because you look at all these things and you go, and you hear somebody else's perspective that you don't necessarily agree on everything with, and you go, huh, I never thought of it that way. 
And that's the kind of discussion we need to have in our country, and we need people to be informed. And that's kind of how we prevent political inaccuracy and, and how we make our voters better informed and making better decisions you know, based on the information that they have. And, and not only that, the information that they have, but also the perspective that they have on the future. And obviously, they're not just voting for the country. They're voting for themselves. And, and some people obviously are going to vote for one person or the other based on their job situation or, or whatever, which right, is right. Ob- absolutely fine. Mm-hmm. But you need, pe- you need people to be informed because people being informed, you're going to have a smarter country. And not only are you going to have a smarter country, but you're also going to have a smarter government because the people are going to figure out that if the government's not serving them, that the people are going to figure their way around that, and they're not going to vote for them. Exactly. They're going to yeah. whittle it down. They're going to exactly. figure out who the smart people are in the government and who they need to get rid of. Yeah, and, and that's kind of more of, of what we need. And I think that's really the definition of how do you prevent political inaccuracy. And I think it's pretty much the same thing you said. I mean, we just need to right, be informed. Right. Mm-hmm. Like you said, CNN, I mean, some of their headlines are – or crazy. I mean, I, I'll go on CNN.com right well, now. Well, absolutely. Yeah, go, go look. Yeah, for some. I mean, this is this is the top headline: White House. Trump asked for Flynn's resignation. If you go and read that story, I mean, it's probably the headline's probably right, but there's probably way more to it. Right. I well, mean, you're you're gonna look at that, and I mean, especially if you're anti-Trump, yeah. you know, which I'm sure some people are. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not I'm not particularly in love with the man, but um, but. Uh, somebody's going to look at that, and they're going to say, what is this lunatic doing asking people to resign? Does he know what he's doing? Yeah. He can't just do that. You can't just walk in there and start firing people, <laughs> yeah. telling people to resign, exactly. yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, if you look behind it and you start finding out, you know, oh, well, there's some possible way that this dude was, you know, connected to the Russians in yeah. this whole thing that, that people talk about, this this giant Russian hack, and and people want to want to point at this and say, Oh, Trump was working with the Russians, yada yada yada. Well, then, if you're making that argument, then, then you should be happy that he's asking this dude to resign, who they're thinking was associated with all this. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I think this guy should resign. I'm not putting my um my opinion in on that. But I'm just saying, you know, in terms of that, there's there's a lot more to it than just oh he wants someone to resign. Yeah. There's a backstory there. There's a backstory to everything. Yeah, I mean, this is like a long article, and you may come out of this article thinking worse of Flynn or Trump or something like that. Exactly, and that's, exactly. You know, and that's okay, That's too. up to you. But, you know, it, you, you have to be fair, and people need to look into this deeper, and they need to make the decision for themselves to say, okay, what's going on? Is this good? Is this bad? Whatever. Exactly, exactly. Right, right. And I sort of to, um, to, to continue with this line, you know, we've kind of been been bringing it to how do we how do we fix political inaccuracy? I think probably probably the best spot to, to bring it to now um, is is uh, really how do we fix it on you know on on the scale that we're at, like where we are, how do we fix it? Meaning I guess in in, in terms of in terms of the likes of you and me and, and people who want to make a change you know, small changes just amongst the people who they talk to. How do you do it? And I, I would say the best thing to do is, unfortunately, it seems to be that politics in this country, uh, like in, at least in terms of amongst the youth, is kind of, you know, it's it's a thing that everybody, um, and if you disagree, you're lying. Everybody loves to think about. Everybody loves to talk about to themselves, even if you're not, even if you don't think you're big into politics. Whenever yeah. you hear something political, you always have a thought that you play off in your mind. And most people just sh- just shut up and don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. But if you, you know, if you try to go to people and and you try to bring up something political, somebody go, "Why are you talking politics? We don't need, we didn't even hear politics now. Like, what are you what are you doing? What are you doing?" But honestly, as I said, hopefully you'll find through this podcast that. Just by starting with politics, you'll get into so much deeper, much more meaningful, philosophical kind of conversations where it really makes you think about stuff. And that's, and that's what I love about talking you know, to the likes of you and, and, and John and Connor yeah. is we get into a lot of that. And that, that stuff I really, really love. And uh, hopefully you know, in the upcoming episodes we'll start getting you know, a little more into that. But, um, but if you really can if, you can, if you can sit down with someone and you can just say, all right, well, Maybe we'll not talk about politics. But let's talk about this cool story I heard about yeah. a woman who spilled coffee on herself and sued McDonald's. And you say that, and someone, all right, I'll hear this. You tell them that story, and you start bringing it into, you know, what what is 
maybe you bring it into what is you know the judicial system in this country like is it is it going the right way is it going the wrong way you know what what's up with that is that something that you should be allowed to sue for you know spilling coffee on yourself even if you know she had a valid reason you know still is that some people will still say it's a bit too audacious of a thing for you to really go to court over or something like that and it sparks a whole conversation. You get, oh, into, yeah. you get into a conversation you would have never gotten into. Yeah, and you think about things in ways that you would have never thought of. Like, oh, this woman, you, you, it's like I said before, you go in, you think, wow, this, this woman's got no case. And then you go, huh, okay, so the coffee was too hot, and she got third-degree burns. And, oh, okay, she, you know, and you think about it differently. And we hope that through this podcast, we don't want to uh, change the way you think necessarily, but we want we want. We want you to be we more informed. We want you to be more informed and maybe re- rethink some things. And, and think And think about, okay, why, why do I believe in this? And that's on both sides. You know, that's, you know, any belief. You know, why, why do I believe this? Okay, what are, what are the reasons? Are they for me? Are they for my country? Whatever. And, th- and that's really, I think, the goal of what we're trying to do here is to kind of inform people in, in a little bit of a different way to maybe think about things right, right. differently you know, than they would have before and not necessarily to change their opinion, but maybe to look at things in a different light that they would not have previously because they had not, it was like, Oh, I didn't think about this that way. That's interesting. You know, and we we can have those discussions and, and we can maybe not, not agree. We don't have to agree, but at least think about things in a slightly different manner. Right. Right. And so I mean, I think, I think a big takeaway here is, um, you know, think about, think about, you know, things that would be, that would be interesting, you know, to start, to start bringing up to people. Hopefully, hopefully through the course of this, you know, this podcast, you know, the episodes that come, we give you interesting things to talk about. You hear something here and you say, man, I'd love to have a conversation like that. I'm going to go bring it up to a few of my friends, see what they have to say. Yeah. And hopefully from there, you know, you're kind of inspired to do that. And, I, and I'll say a lot of the conversations we're going to have are totally inspired by conversations that that either we've had before, we've had with other friends of ours, or uh-huh. we've heard other people, you know, have we weren't even associated with. But it's a conversation we want to have. Yeah. And so if you take some of what we've got here and um, and and you use it, you know, with your friends or whoever. You know, really, you can get into some into some great great conversations, and and it'll force you to go, man. I don't know that. Let me look it up. You know, and and people people as as ready as the internet is, are just seem so hesitant to look things up. I don't know what that is. Yeah. There are totally times that I'm thinking to myself. Well, what's that story? You know, oh, yada, yada, yada. Is that how it went? Something, you know? Man, I should look that up. Yeah. Not now. And I never do. And, you and never I do. never look it up. It's same. But I, I could. Yeah. I could pull out. I'm, you know, sitting in the car, for God's sakes, doing nothing, you know? Just, yeah. Just waiting to get home. You know, I got another yeah. 20 minutes sitting in the car when I'm just listening to music. I could pull out my phone right there, look up, you know, whatever it, it, whatever it was, you know? some interesting story about anything about yeah. anything literally anything you want to 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 find out or or you want to to recollect if it's something that you think you heard somewhere you want to look it up you could do that at any time and i promise you it's on the internet it oh is yeah. everything is everything on the is on the internet Absolutely, white asparagus is probably <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> is probably on the internet somewhere <laughs> if you looked it up but yet people seem so hesitant to to do that to look things up you know it's 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 and it's not even they don't trust the internet which i mean don't get me wrong you shouldn't totally trust the internet but it a lot of times people give the internet less credit than it's worth you know if you just look something up and you get a quick answer it probably is at least to some degree true you know it's yeah. as true as like a as like a like a news headline you know so it might not be totally true but it's got some truth to it yeah you know that that kind of matters so um, I, you know, as I said, just it, I don't I don't get why it is, but yeah, but I don't people either. just seem to have such hesitation to look things up. So hopefully, you get into conversations. You go, I, man, I don't know that, and you need to readily admit when you don't know something. Yeah, that's important. You need to readily admit it, and and if you do, you readily admit, hey, I don't know that. You look it up, and you learn way more than you ever you ever would have known. Even if you were right, y- you'll learn way more. Yeah. 
And I think that's that's a magical thing. Yeah, and I mean, just to kind of you know wrap up what you said, I, I just looked up white asparagus <laughs> just to see because you said you know you could look up white asparagus. I think I found maybe ten recipes on the first page of Google. I found out that it is not actually white asparagus. It's ga- it's garden asparagus with the scientific name Asparagus officinalis. Uh, it is a spring vegetable. It is a flowery perennial plant species in the genus Asparagus, and it has 1% dietary fiber, uh, 1% vitamin C, 1% iron, 2% vitamin A, and I found all of that one Google search. Exactly. And, and that's why you need to be and informed. I'm, I mean, is all of that 100% correct? Uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe give not, or take yeah. this or that, but I mean, you're getting, you're getting the main gist of it there. Oh, you really yeah. are. Yeah, so uh, you know, we really want to thank you for joining us uh, for uh, for our uh, first po- episode here of Political Inaccuracy. We really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, uh, the next time you hear us, you'll hear Connor and or Jonathan as well. Uh, I want to uh, thank Deglin for this opportunity. It's been a lot of fun here today, and uh, that's yeah, that's going to uh, just about do it for us. So for Deglin, uh, John, and Connor, hopefully they'll be with us next time. I am Jimmy Sullivan. We hope to see you on our next episode. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.